Hello, this is the next section of revision for Unit 1 of Business GCSE for Year 10 and this is the second topic that we've covered and this is marketing and we start off with the role of marketing. What is marketing? Well, what we have to do with marketing is identify the needs of customers and then tell the customers or inform them how their needs can be met by the business. Well, of course, that's when we advertise to them. To find out their needs, of course, we would use market research. Then when we inform them, we use some kind of promotion. Um, and hopefully, if we do this correctly, this will increase the business's sales. And of course, businesses are about selling goods and services to make a profit. There's a large variation in how much money or budget small and large businesses have to spend. Um, so we always have to bear that in mind when we're answering exam questions because if you say that a small business can can use TV advertising then obviously you're going to lose marks for that because they won't have the money for it, they won't have the budget for it. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about in this is conducting market research and the reasons why we conduct market research, well, we want to find out what the demand is for our product or our services so that we do the right thing and that we produce the right amount to start off with. We want to know what customers want and need. We don't want to waste money and resources on products that won't sell. We want to understand the market. If we're setting up a business, are there enough people out there who actually want what we want to sell uh, to them? Is it big enough to make it worthwhile? And we also want to find out about the competition. Where are they? Who are they? What do they sell? And how much do they charge? Now, there's two types mainly of research. There's primary research, and this is research that you go out and collect yourself. So this might include um, you carrying out a questionnaire or a telephone survey, and you can actually target specific customers. So a company might say, we want to talk to men over the age of 35 who like dogs. Um, and it's cheaper to do than face-to-face -face interviews. However, um, people might not understand the questions, in fact, without somebody there explaining to them, and you might not get many people who want to talk to you in this way. Interviews, for example, if you're out shopping and somebody says, do you mind me asking a few questions? Um, you can target specific customers, and you can explain if the people don't really understand, but how many people are actually going to stop in the street and say, yeah, I'll talk to you. Yeah, that's great. I want to interview, interrupt my day and give you free information about myself. And also, um, you can end up with biased results. This means that the people answering the questions answer the way they think you want. They think that you want the, them to answer. Um, for example, if they're asking about how many units of alcohol people drink a week and they might say, oh, well, I, I don't drink much at all. And actually, they're drinking more than that. So they're don't, not necessarily very accurate. And it can be very expensive to have people out on the street interviewing potential customers. Another thing you could use are focus groups where you have small groups of people who sit down and talk about your product, your advertising, and you listen to them and you ask them questions. You get very in-depth information. However, it's very expensive to carry out. And obviously, because you've got such a small sample of the, your customers, um, it might not represent everybody. Trials are where you test a new product that you've got. So you would test it, say McDonald's want to bring out a new burger, they'll test it in the London area and see if it sells before they roll it out to the rest of the country. However, it's very expensive to set this up. And um, if London isn't necessarily very representative of the rest of the country, then you could waste your money because that, that data might not be re very relevant. Now, secondary research is where you're looking at data that's already been gathered. So you're not actually going and doing any questioning or finding out anything yourself. You're looking at information that somebody else has already put together into a report. So it might be internal data in the business. You might have sales data you can look at, customer feedback, which is fantastic because it's all there and it's free and you can access it straight away. However, you're not asking specific questions, so it might not be the information you want to know. Um, at that moment. You can also carry out internet research, of course. You can look at censuses that the government have carried out where they ask people every 10 years, every single household in the UK, every 10 years, who are you? Where do you work? Who lives in your house? What religion are you? It's amazing how many people are Jedi Knights. 
Um, and the census has a lot of data there that's free and gives you a quick overview um, of your local market or even your markets further, further afield around the whole country. However, depending on what you're looking at online, um, for example, if you're looking at a competitor's website, they might say, we're fantastic and we do this, this, and this, might not actually be strictly true. And again, the information might not be specifically what you need. And then the other thing you could use in newspapers and magazines, you could look at what the competition are doing. They might have articles about other businesses. You might be able to see the advertising and the promotion by other businesses. Um, and the downside of that is it's not, it's not necessarily specific to what you need, is it? Just at the end of this section, because I know it's been a long one, you get qualitative data. And this gets the imp opinions of the consumers. So, for example, um, what do you think of this? And the customer might give you lots and lots of different opinions and ideas. Whereas you also get quantitative data, which is where you're getting numbers. So you'd say to the customers, do you like this advertising? Yes or no. And you end up with a number. 63% of the customers liked it and 37% of the customers said no, they didn't like it. And that is quantitative. Think of quantity. You get a quantity. And that is the end of the first section.